One of you has asked me to solve this question involving histograms, and before we start, um, I want to make very clear that this is not my question. I did not create it. Uh, this is from Cambridge Examinations, yeah? so we have to give credit and say thanks to them. We are just here together to solve it and uh, to help each other with our maths. Okay, let's have a go. It says, a group of students takes an English test, okay, and the results are shown in the histogram. And this is a histogram. What is a histogram? It's some sort of bar chart. However, there cannot be space between the different bars. Yeah? And with a bar chart, sometimes there is space uh, in between. But with a histogram, no space is in between. They're all connected. And the second important difference is, is that the width of the different bars can be different. Yeah? As you can see, this one is a lot wider than the other two bars. Yeah? So that is a histogram. Now, not always, but most likely also for you when you answer questions involving histograms, they will talk about frequency density, and that is very important. And if you are also doing some physics, you will know the word density already. Uh, but let's read on and see what that means, frequency density. A hundred students, they say, score marks in the range from 50 to 75. Yeah, so let's have a look at that bar from 50 to 75, a hundred students. Well, if I look at the height of the bar, it only says four. Yeah, but the vertical axis is not the frequency, so it's not four students yeah, in that group. No, it's frequency density. And then you need to realize that to get the frequency, you have to look at the area of your bar. Yeah, so indeed 25, yeah, from 50 to 75, 25 times four is 100. So with frequency density, the frequency you get when you find the area of your bar. Yeah? So there are 100 students in this group. And they give you an example of that. Yeah? So this example is there for you to, uh, to re basically to remind yourself of that. Yeah? So we're talking about the area. Good, we have finished our analysis. Let's have a look at uh, the questions now. How many students score marks from 0 to 50? So from 0 to 50, so how many, yeah? what is the frequency, if you like? So we're looking at the area, because it's frequency density. So 50 times 3, yeah? because it is uh, a normal uh, rectangle. So it is width times height, 50 times 3. So there will be 150 students in that group. Yeah, And although there are more students in this group, the bar is lower than the next group. Why? Because it is wider. Okay, so 150 students compared to 100, still it is lower. Yeah, why is that? Because it is a wider group as well. Okay, frequency density, the area is going to give me my frequency. Yeah? How many students scored a mark in a range from 75 to 100? So that again is then 25 times 5. 25 times 5. Oh, I need a pen for that. 25 times 5 equals 125, yeah? So there are going to be 125 students, oh, I want that in red, 125 students over there. Okay, good. Area, frequency density. So we understand that now. And then we can move on to the next question. Calculate an estimate of the mean mark of this group of students. Now, please make sure you have seen my videos or that you will have a look at my videos about grouped frequency tables because that's a bit of a paradox, isn't it? Calculate an estimate, yeah? Where the word calculate implies a uh, certain accuracy, yeah? That it's, uh, uh, yeah, you have to find an exact uh, value, calculate. And an estimate means as if you are guessing. Yeah, so calculating an estimate, that's, that's a little bit funny. Yeah? So uh, please be aware of that. You are not guessing at all, yeah? You're not guessing. But to find the mean yeah, mark of a group uh, of data, I have to plus all the scores, plus them, and I divide that by the amount of tests taken. Yeah? Now if I look at the scores from 0 to 50, 150 students are in that group from 0 to 50, 150 students, but I do not know their exact scores. I do not know their exact scores. It could be 20, 20, 18, 41, 31, whatever. I don't know it. I only know that 150 students are in this group. Okay, so what do I have to do when I'm calculating an estimate is that I take what we call the mid value of each group. So the mid value, so the best I can do in this case is say, well, okay, 
I'll take the mid value, which is 25, yeah, from 0 to 50, the mid value in the middle is 25. So I'm just going to say that all those 150 students got a score of 25. Yeah, so you're calculating an estimate, yeah, because this is, of course, not exact, but it's just the best we can do in this situation, yeah, calculate an estimate. So 150 students have a score of 25, and you do that for all three groups. Yeah? So I'm going to take the mid value for this group as well, from 50 to 75. If you like, uh, you add them and you divide it by two, but the mid value is 62.5 if you do that. And the same for the third group. What is the mid value from 75 to 100? You can plus that, divide by two, you're gonna get 87.5. Good. Then you find uh, uh, the mean, so 150 times a score of 25 plus 100 times a score of 62.5 plus, I'm going to continue there, I have 125 students who got a score of 87.5. And all of that divided by the frequency. How many scores in total are taken? Now, unfortunately, some of you are going to say, oh, divided by three. Yeah, but that is wrong. Because if I, if I just look at the scores, it's from zero to 100. So if I would have to guess, I'd say the mean, uh, the average, if you like, is about 60, okay? Anyway, it has to be between zero and 100. Because how many scores are taken? 150 plus another 100 plus another 125. Please be aware of that, yeah? So the frequency is 375. So if you accidentally do three, yeah, your answer will not make sense. Eh? You'll get a mean score of, I don't know, 682. That's nonsense, of course. Nobody got a, a score of 682. Eh? This is a percentage out of 100. So if I'm guessing, it should be 60. Yeah, the frequency 375. Plug it in your calculator. Uh, I don't have a calculator here, but you're going to get something like 55.83 and some more decimals, yeah? Anyway, it's not going to be an exact answer. Are you going to get more decimals? I think you do. I'm, I'm not sure about that, yeah? But have a look in your calculator. That's what you write, uh, That's what you get. Please write down the unrounded answer first, because then you tell yourself, okay, a non-exact answer. So uh, it's not an angle, so we're talking about three significant figures. One, two, three. And then you ask yourself the question, the 8, does it stay in 8 or does it go to a 9? That depends on the next one. And then you tell yourself, well, that stays in 8 because a 3 is less than 5. 55.3. Does that make sense as a final answer? Uh, again, we go back. What is the mean mark? Well, I said, oh, I'm guessing 60. Well, that was just a guess. Eh? So if I get 55 point, uh, sorry, not point 0.3. Did I say point 0.3? Hopefully you guys were shouting out loud. No, shout, shouting out loud. That is wrong. It should be point 0.8. Eh? 55.8. Sorry about that. Again, I estimated 60, I believe, somewhere um, uh, sometime earlier. I get an answer of 55.8. So that is an answer I trust. That's an answer I believe. But if, I, if my answer would be 155.8, I tell myself I made a silly mistake somewhere and I can easily check where because I wrote down all my workings good that was that about histograms hopefully that was helpful so please share and like this video if it was and then I can also help your friends a little bit better if you do so and check out my site explainingmaps.com uh, for more uh, f uh, resources yeah? and everything is for free I also have a forum there where you can ask me your questions and I will help you with a similar video like this one and don't worry that is all for free as well yeah I'm just glad I've, I can help you okay I also have a Facebook account and a Twitter account uh, where you can um, get into touch with me as well I wish you a very pleasant day and see you later bye bye